Let's see, there's not Hosea. Oh, Zechariah. Is Zechariah. Zechariah. Mm -hmm. It's a text for you for me. Zechariah chapter 4. And uh, I'm going to read verse 6 and down to verse 10. Zechariah chapter 4, 6 through verse 10. I'm going to read it for you. Gracious Father, grant us the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. It says, Zechariah 4, verse 6 through 10. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Keep that in mind. Who art thou, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel? Thou shalt become a plain, and he shall bring forth the headstone thereof with shouting, crying, Grace, grace unto it. Moreover, despise the day of small things. Mm. Well, you know, read that text so many years ago. Though your beginning is small, your end should be great. Mm -hmm. God said, do not despise the beginning of small things. It says, you shall see it. It's going to be magnified. The Lord said that. If we stay out of God's way, to God be the glory. Any prayer requests for we have? Any prayer requests? Yes, ma'am. Four people, all right. Mm -hmm. All right. So you you need the Holy Spirit to minister to four people, and you don't want to lean to your own understanding. Mm -hmm. You said, "Trust in the Lord with all thy heart; lean not to thy own understanding, and He shall direct." All right then. Keep to her in prayer, and we will definitely pray that God will give her the grace and wisdom. All right? Anyone else? Prayer request? I want to remember Karen. Karen DeWin, yes. Keep Karen and her family in prayer as they funeralize the sisters as we comfort them. All right. Praying that God will give you <clears throat> tact, wisdom, how to get them a burn. Press that mic over there. You, you got to speak. There's a mic right next to you. You sit right about your purse, in front of your purse. Oh, dear. In front of your purse, not in your purse. I know it was, I was looking for this. What they got to do with the mic? Oh, it, it was, I was going to read a statement about that. Okay, you'll come back. Okay, no. but I can't find it. Yeah. Anyway, just keep me in. I got you in prayer. Pray for <clears throat> Jeremiah. Mm -hmm. Young Jeremiah is a young man that I've uh, been ministering to him from the beginning of a very tough time with my daughter. And uh, he sent me a, a text yesterday, the day before yesterday. And um, he has a, a baby and his girlfriend. He's separating because he said he wants to follow the Lord and she's not. And, you know, so I encouraged him. I said, you know, let me tell you something. I am not telling you what to do, but do your best to serve the Lord and see if you can, by the life that you live, that child is going to need both of you together. So I encourage him and keep him in prayer. 
His name is Jeremiah. Jeremiah, yes. And Jeremiah. Keep also Timothy and his family, another young man. Timothy and his family, keep them in prayer. They have their struggles, and, uh, but it's him and his wife mm -hmm. and two children. And his wife is on the same page with him and following, thus said the Lord. So, Amen. Amen. Jeremiah. Okay. Renella says, happy midweek, family. Could you go back? Happy midweek, family. Please pray for my friends. Nicole who is still grieving <clears throat> the loss of her father and her two children to receive the Lord in their heart, as well as all of my family. We'll do keep Renella. And Mitchie says, please pray for me that the Lord may fill me daily with his Holy Spirit so that it may descend discern his will daily and so that he will enable that I will be enabled to continue in the things that he has been showing me to progress indeed indeed yes and um keep Laurencia the young lady that was with us in the gardening school okay Laurencia. Um, you know we all rallied and loved on her and just a sweetheart and she sent a message says she was so blessed and encouraged and she's excited with what God has in store for her mm. and G, the guest her husband. Amen. Keep her in prayer. It says, pleasant midweek greeting, precious ones, and meet ministry family. The brethren joining at this for the first time. Welcome to your meet ministry family midweek prayer time. Praise God. Praise him. Any other praises before we move on? Thank God for this midweek. We have a lot to be thankful for. And so with those prayer requests, we're going to have a word of prayer. So the Parker said, pray for Andre, that he will listen to God concerning voice, and me, that I will place his health in God's hand. Keep Sister Parker and her husband Andre in prayer concerning his health. Amen to that. All right, let us pray. Gracious, eternal, holy, righteous, heavenly Father, our sovereign God, our infinite, loving, forgiving, compassionate God, thou art faithful. Your promises are sure. Your mercies are as equal as your justice. And Lord, you said in Hebrews 13, 5, you will never leave nor forsaken. You will order our steps in your word. Your ears are bent to the prayers of your children. Prayer, Lord, is the key in the hands of faith that unlike heaven's storehouse. So we come at this time, lifting up all the spoken prayer requests that's gone from our lips, each and every one of them. Those that have come from our family from online, we ask for your divine intervention in behalf of the sick, in behalf of our children, in behalf of our spouses, behalf of family members. We pray for the guidance of the Holy Spirit in our lives. We pray, Lord, that you would teach us even how to pray, what to pray for. Help us, Lord, not to enter your courts of praise with any selfishness in our hearts, but we want your perfect will to be done and not our will. So, Lord, take away this old troubled hearts of ours. Take away the doubtful heart. Increase our capacity to trust you, to allow you to direct our minds and our thoughts. And Lord, we commit all these requests and unspoken requests into your hand, and we thank you in advance for your divine leading and providential movements. And now, Lord, as we come and open up your word, studying this subject, how to know the leadings of God, we ask for the grant, we ask for the presence of the Holy Spirit to guide us and the angels in the midst of us keeping back seen and unseen distraction that would interfere with us hearing your word. And we thank you for this. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. 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 To God be the glory. All right, then. Let's go to the word of God. We just got through praying, Sister Donna, but we will keep in mind any special prayer requests. We already prayed. Anything on your heart, mind. If not, we'll move. Any prayer requests you have? Yeah, pray for my grandchildren. Your grandchildren. Wait, wait, wait now. Wait, 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 wait. You should have just stopped.
Pray for my grandchildren. Pray for my grandchildren. Now, I want you to understand what you just said. When you look in the mirror, you got to say, Lord, here I am. Now, are you a mess? Am I a mess? Yes, I'm a mess. All right, man. So mess is not relative. Even though they having their struggles, pray for them. Yes, be a pray. light. We, we, I know what you mean. Pray for a light now. Pray to be a light. Margaret, before we move on, we, you have any prayer requests? Because we started early. Now, yes, I know. Yeah. Any special prayer request? My brother. All right. And then perhaps I already mentioned Sarah and then her family. Yeah, we already prayed for those. Yes, ma'am. All right, then. Keep those in prayer. All right, we're going to look at a word, and I will give you the notes to what we're going to talk about. All right? What does that say up there? How to know God is leading. Any of us ever ponder that thought? Only you and I ponder that thought. Everybody else is straight on. They know. Amen? <laughs> All right. Let's turn to the book of Psalms, chapter 32, verse 8. One verse. Psalms 32, verse 8. Hmm? All right. I'll put it up on the screen here. All right. So as you get there, or we can read it from the screen. Let's read it. What does it say? I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with my eye. God will teach us and guide us in the way we should go. Now listen to this. It says, God's promises to personally, in no, God's promises. To personally instruct and teach us, guiding us with his watchful eye. His guidance is intimate and individualized, tailored to our unique circumstances and needs. Did you get that? It's just like when I shared my testimony there in, in uh, Connecticut, and, and it really resonated with my dear, one of my dear brothers. He said, um, it made me think. But I pray that God don't have to lead me like he led you. Yeah. So therefore, that's what I thought about. I said, God's promise to personally instruct and teach us, guiding us with his watchful eyes. His guidance is intimate and individualized. That's so important. Tailored, tailored to our unique service. That's what I told the brother. I said, look, you're not going to have my experience. It was tailored, unique for me, and God knew exactly what you need. Hmm? Very important to understand that. John 10, 27, Jesus said, my sheep should be hear my voice. Sorry about that. Hear my voice and know them, and I know them, and they follow me. Now, my question, are you seeking God for guidance in your situation? That's important. Personal, ministry, the decisions that we make have an impact, not just on our lives, but also on the lives of those around us. Did you get that? So when we make a decision, we cannot think in a narrow mindset. My decision is going to impact my wife, my fellow workers, everyone under my atmosphere. It goes on further, it says here, when we have to make a decision... We often rely on what we know to make the best possible choice. I'm going to say it again. When we have to make a decision, we often rely on what we know to make the best possible choice. Does anybody understand? Yeah. All right. But you cannot know the impact or consequences of those choices you make ahead of Time. Head of time. Is that clear to us? Huh? The good news is that you are not alone and you can have expert guidance from God. Expert guidance. Because in 1 Peter 5, 7, God loves you and cares about you very much, according to 1 Peter 5, 7. Because he wants to understand the love of God. Is your sacred name, Jack. God is your Yahweh Yari, provider. Yahweh Roi, the Lord is my shepherd. And Yahweh Shema, the Lord is dead. There's your name there, huh? All there. 
It goes on. God's promises that if you draw near to him, he will draw near to you and show you things that you do not know. All right. Someone go to James 4, 8 for me. Someone read Jeremiah 33, 3. Uh, I get my words again. Jer- James 4, 8. You got, all right. So, so Jackson got Jeremiah 33, 3. Someone got James 4, 8. Get the mic. Go ahead, dear. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Mm-hmm. Draw nigh to God. All right. What about Jeremiah 33, 3? Call mm. unto me, mm. and I will answer thee, and show thee great mm. and mighty things mm. which thou knowest not. Thou knowest, knowest not. He will show us great and mighty things and mighty. which we know is not. What do you think about that? Huh? Which we know is not. Do we know that we don't know? God will show us great and mighty things. Listen to what it says. The Bible is full of God's instructions to guide us in every decision that we have to make. Let's see what the Bible says about me. Yes, sir. Give him the mic. Give the mic. I've been listening while she's making decisions. Mm-hmm. Turn, turn the mic up. Push it up. Yeah, I said I've been listening intently in what you were saying in decision making. And it takes me to it takes me to, to Proverbs 13 then. Only <laughs> by pride commit contention. Yeah? Listen. Be, be quick to listen. See where you're going. <laughs> Only by pride commit, commit contention. Mm-hmm. But the text didn't stop there. Mm-hmm. It said, but, mm-hmm. but with the well advised uh-huh. is wisdom. Did you hear that? But with the well advised is wisdom. And unfortunately, among us, as far as my experience goes, we tend to go into a corner and make decisions in seclusion. Mm-hmm. And it uh, impacts other people's lives so badly. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. We just saw that. That's right. We are afraid to discuss what we are doing because of what, how other people would see us. They think we have money. They think we this, we that. The other. And I've benefited so much from discussing Others, in particular, in different fields, in different mm-hmm. experiences. Absolutely. And we, when we keep it silent like that, it could be yeah. deleterious. And what you're saying, you're going to see as we get, because this will not even be long, the very thing you'll see is one of the aspects of being able to be directed by God and making a decision, that, where others play a part in this. So let's look at this. Here are four ways to help us to discern how God is leading you. Now, I have, I'll pass this out to you when I finish. Number one, consider the Spirit's prompting, the movement of the Holy Spirit prompting. In Acts 20, 22, Paul announces his new missionary plans by saying, and now compelled by the Spirit, he says, to the elders of the church of Ephesus, that God is pulling him elsewhere. Even though Paul loved the fruitful ministry in Ephesus, he had a feeling of being pulled somewhere new through the inner witness of the Holy Spirit. So we each may be pulled, but we got to be sure that we know it's the Spirit prompting. Hmm? Even in this ministry, people say, well, I'm pulled over there now. I'm pulled over here. Okay. So it says here, number two. The Spirit will never invite you to do something that goes against the revealed will of God in the Scripture. It is clear that God is love and that love fulfills the law. So, 
If the choice you are considering doesn't lead you further into love for God and neighbor, it is probably not God leading you. Mm. Did you hear that? That's plain. Okay. It says, this is what it says now. It says, the Spirit will never, I think we all agree with this, invite you to do something that God, that, that, goes, that goes against the re revealed will of God in Scripture. It is clear that God is love, and that love fulfills the law. So, if the choice you are considering doesn't lead you further into I was a love affair with God, a deeper love for God, and neighbor, it is probably not God leading you. Do we have a misunderstanding of that? Hmm? A love for God and love for the neighbor. Those are the two principles. Love God with all your heart, all your soul, your neighbor as yourself. So if you've been led somewhere, it's not going to take you deeper into that love affair with God and your neighbor, a soul salvation. He's not leading you. Probably he's not leading you. Go ahead, Carl. And we have to be watchful because, again, we have to rely on the word. If God is leading us in a certain direction and there are bumps in the road, it doesn't mean he's not leading. Absolutely right. Absolutely right. Bumps leading God leading you doesn't mean the road is paved with gold. And that you're going to be exempt from trials. You just need to know the word of God. Absolutely. Good point. All right, let's move on. Remember, you're not the remember you're not the former things. Neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth, and shall you know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Woo. That's Isaiah 4, 3, 18, 19. Now, God said he would make a way out of nowhere. That's what he says. Is that what he said? So why don't we just, just abide in that love and wait on God unfold? He'll make a way. Got to keep this in our mind. Number three, consider God wise people in your life. Consider wise people in your life. Think of the people in your life who are following Jesus and Filled with the fruit of the Spirit and ask them what they think about your choices. It's unwise to make life altering decisions without consulting Christian friends who you trust. We need to talk with people before taking big steps of trust. Not because God is not trustworthy, but because we are all growing in our ability to discern God's leading. And it's possible to get it wrong. It is wise to invite others into the journey, that journey. What y'all think about that? Because the Bible says, where no counsel is, the people fall. But in the multitude of counselors, there's safety. Hmm? Get that in mind. You just don't stand in a little groupie. That's, that's outside wisdom out here. Keep that in mind. That's number three. Number four, consider the goodness of God. Finally, because our trust is in a loving and faithful Heavenly Father who is always with us and not in our, perf in our perfect decision making, we can take experimental steps without fear. If we understand the goodness of God. God is the director of our path, and he will come and if we come to him with pure hearts, posture in the way of love, he will lead us, according to Psalms 32, 8. Go back. He will lead us. He will lead us. Trusting in God's goodness set us free from the tyranny of unexpected outcome. What does it mean, the tyranny of unexpected outcome? Huh? Mario. Because we can go through a lot of ooh, squirming and worming. There's a way that seems right unto a man. Mm -hmm. That text came to my mind. So why something seems right, it don't necessarily make it right. And this is why we need the guidance from God 
mm-hmm. constantly okay. trusting in God goodness but what is meant by it's going to set us free from tyranny of unexpected you true the same is true but it says trusting in God goodness goodness set us free from the tyranny of unexpected outcome huh unexpected God you see anything in that Margaret yes well, just taking that one sentence, it seems like it could be saying that trusting in God's goodness sets us free from the tyranny of, une- of expected. Unexpected in God. Of unexpected. Oh, be expect. Oh, You're right. You're right. Expected. Expected, I'm sorry. expected outcomes. Go ahead. Uh, you know, if, we, if I trust in the goodness of God and the principles he set forth in his word, um, it's, it's not going to derail I'm not going to derail. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What I see there, you, God... Give me a mic. Mm. The tyranny of expected outcomes. God mm. knows the end from the beginning. That's true now. And if you put your trust in him, you will not experience the tyranny of expected outcome. He but, knows the end from the beginning. You know then, that's true. It says that trusting God's goodness... Set us free. free. Now, now remember this. The outcome has not materialized. In our prayer, then we can be anticipating something that, 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 that keep us under sheer d- distress, huh? anxiety. So when we understand the word of God, moving by the Holy Spirit, praying according to his promise, abiding him, we let, set it before God, then we should not experience any agony, or any anxiety of what's going to take place. That's what it means. We, okay, here even in the ministry, projects, funds, seems to be insurmountable. Time is shrinking. We hear, I mean, uh, time, you sit all on, it's all everywhere in the news. You, you go to bed and say, Lord, you might take this person. Oh, Lord, I know, don't seem like we got enough time to complete this. Because it's beyond our reach financially. So I just do the best I can. Mm. That's a very hopeless situation. Tyranny. Tyranny. We need to define that word tyranny. Oh, tyranny. Oh, be tyrannical. What is tyranny? Tyrannical. Tyranny. What is tyranny? Come on. The word tyranny, tyrant. You know what a tyrant is forceful, is controlling, exacting. Is destructive. Brutal. Brutal. That's what it means. The tyranny of Brutal. expected outcome. Feel now, just put in this common word, common word. Feel with anxiety. Worry. Mm-hmm. We worry because we don't see like God quote the scripture. God know the end from the beginning. We got to see like God said. If God now, if God called you to do something, if you know God has called you. You know emphatically. Then what should be your your posture? What should be your position with that? You look at your circumstances. You look at your situation. And all of that you have is not measured up to the call. Well, it's like Jonah. God what about called me? him yeah? to go to Nineveh. And the mic is not... Push it up, you got it. He called. He called uh, Jonah to go to Nineveh, but Jonah, uh, he didn't think it was uh, the people were worthy. Right. So he decided to go another way. Okay, but now I I, I love what y'all say. I want you to apply it personally. That's Jonah. What okay. about Jackson? Okay, for me. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Anybody else got a mic here? I'm serious. Let's. So it's pray, prayer many times has helped us to draw strength and courage and direction. We understand the word of God, but we need to make the application to our experience. Yes, ma'am. So it's come what may. If I know that the Lord is directing me, mm-hmm. then he knows what he's going to allow, good or bad, to stand in my path to get me to the direction that he is pointing me. And we had to what? What we have to do then? That's Maintain it. the course. Maintain the course. No matter how many bumps or lumps in the pathway, 
seemingly through our eyes, we look through the, our lens, and that situation becomes tyrannical to us. You understand what I'm saying, Margaret? Well, I, yeah. I think of impossibilities. That's, okay. That how, how am I going to do that in spite of what's going on? All right. That's not, okay. Now, um, have, have we ever looked through those lens, our lens? We're going to get to uh, what we see as impossibility mm -hmm. to the degree we begin to question. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's time to get spiritually pumped up here. Yeah. We have to see through our peripheral vision what is taking a place. You know, it's just like when Myra talking about in a in a high tone, things are taking place. See, that's a microscosm what can take place, period. And we see in other areas of the ministry, same thing is happening. So we have to draw from that which God has shown us because even subconsciously, our influence can stifle others. Our influence. You don't have to even verbalize it. It's an atmosphere. It's a spirit that emanates. Huh? Does anybody understand what I'm talking about? Yeah, that's, that's right. It is deadly. That's tyrannical. My right here. And we're supposed to be light. Go ahead. I was just thinking of a couple of, of phrases. One of them is, is the cup is half full, not half empty. That's right. And the other one is, and Larry and I were talking about this earlier this afternoon, keep calm and mm. carry on. Keep calm and carry on. Now, now, did he quote that? We, I don't know who said I wanna, it first. I want to I wanna hold him to that. <laughs> <laughs> keep calm. All right. Carry on. And carry on. Now, now listen to what it says. Huh? It says here, but sometimes, sometimes it keeps us paralyzed and unable to move forward. What keep us? It says trusting in God's goodness. We need to know how good a good God is. We got to know that His goodness to set us free from the tyranny of expected outcomes. It is normal to care about how. The details roll out. It's normal. Like we was talking about, I mean, we need to get all the little details. But sometimes it keeps us paralyzed and unable to move forward. The good news is that it is not about making perfect choices every time. It's about Jesus who promises to be with us and to work out salvation in us no matter what. Somebody read Jeremiah 29, 11. What is this called? Get that mic right next to you. We'll be praying for the Bronson family. 29, 11 says, For I know the thoughts that mm -hmm. I think toward you, Amen. said the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, mm -hmm. to give you an expected end. Now, that quote is very familiar to all of us. I tell you, we quote, quote, but we need to put that flesh on. Now, what is that saying for us, God? That expected end is not to save you from trouble and trials, you know. It's no. to save you eternally. That's right. Now, but in lieu of that, he has a plan for us. It's expected end, yes, to spend eternity, eternity with him. Now, remember this, that many of us pray for deliverance from suffering, not from sin. You understand that, Margaret? Because... Suffering is the results of sin. So why pray to remove the symptoms and not the cause? I think we, <laughs> we need not to we need not to pray to be free from the symptoms, but from the cause. Cause effect. You remember Proverbs 26 2? The curse cause less should not come. Joe 29, 11 said, the cause I knew not, I searched it out. So we always praying for relief from the symptoms and not the root. We're looking at the fruit, not the root. And what's the fruit? What's the root of all of our symptomatic problems? Self. Only. <laughs> Let me close out. Any questions before I close? I got one other one statement for me. There's one. Just give me a tangible 
Give me a tangible example of what you just said there, All right, please. Praying that that is sim- very loaded. Okay. Say this, that here we are in the ministry, and there is some, you know, some contention and misunderstanding, and I can say, now, Lord, all you need to do is change that person's mind, and then I will be at peace. Because I'm saying, not saying to God, that person is the cause of my unrestfulness. So I'm praying that he or she may be removed or changed. Symptoms, effects, but what's the cause? What's the cause? I am the cause. How I view the situation. I view that person as being the problem. And by me having that attitude, I have a more serious problem than he has. Because I should be a conduit through which God will manifest his loving, kindness, and forgiveness. So the same with disease. People come to the health center. They want to get free of the uh, health condition. Now remember this. Let me give you a physiological. You remember the definition of disease? Ministry of page 127. Disease is a what? Effort. Effort of nature to free the system from condition that results from the violation of the laws of health. Right? Now, there's four steps in case of sickness. Ascertain the cause. Change unhealthy condition. And number three, correct wrong habit. Now, what's number four? Ah, then assist nature. Now, what does the word then mean? After you find the cause, after you change unhealthy condition, after you correct wrong, then you apply the herbs. So when people call me, with high blood pressure, all sickness, they're not looking for me to help them with the find the cause or even a condition or correct harm. They want the then, treating the symptoms and not dealing with the cause. Everybody understand what I'm saying? So even our spiritual walk. I don't want all that. I want some Yeah, one more statement. I'm closing now because I want you, I want you, all you're getting. I want you to get some understanding. We focus in on the symptoms. We focus in on how people behave. We got to learn how to separate the behavior from the individual. They act in crit- my wife prayer. I said, Lord, she want to know how to connect with the soul, with the person, people. Are you understand what I'm saying? I'm saying to her that your focus is on the person and not able to separate what they're doing, that's the behavior, from the person. Therefore, you can still love that person, show love, show even affirmation to the person, and hate the behavior. God does not hate the person. He hates the behavior. Now, how more plain can you get? Looking at the symptoms. We're not looking at, see, this is what I want to leave with. I want God to truly show me how to minister like Christ ministered. I want his spirit in every situation where I can walk with a situation and still have admiration, encouragement about the individual. Where I don't put that person in a box, I stay away from him, etc. And that is something that we're going to learn as we're having our meeting today. We're going to have to learn that you cannot run from yourself. Hmm? And that was a thought here. I don't know if I put it in here. But anyway, let's move on quickly. Yeah, I got it here somewhere. Now, notice what it says. The Bible shows us God in his high and holy place, not in a state of inactivity, not in silence and solitude, but surrounded by 10,000 times 10,000, 1,000, 1,000 holy angels. We can't even count that far. All waiting to do as well. All waiting. Can you imagine, if you just imagine, you got all the military force in this world. Now you got war going on, but you got innumerable angels, innumerable angels waiting to do God's will. Keep this in mind. Waiting. Through these messengers, he is in active communication with every part of his dominion. 
Now, what is this dominion? Talk to me. What? All the world. How many are there? You can't number them. Please keep this in mind. It goes further, it says, by his spirit, he is everywhere present. Through the agency of his spirit and his angels, he ministers to the children of men. Above the distractions of the earth, he sits enthroned. All things are open to his divine survey. And from his great and calm eternity, he orders that which his providence sees best. Now, before you speak now, this is all you. Did you, did, you, did, you, did you see anything in that speak to you personally? I mean, before you, before you say what you I want to say. I mean, when you understand this, do you see anything how this can be individualized in your life? Can anybody speak to what, am I, what I'm asking for a quote? For Cosby. Because he, are open to his, divine his providence. Now remember, it says, all things are open to his divine survey, and from his great and calm eternity, he orders. That which his providence sees best. He orders that which his providence sees best. He orders. What is, he ta- what is God talking about here? He orders. Did he order your steps to be here mm-hmm. in different, different situations that you thought you had ordered? It? <laughs> oh. uh, you just, well, I wanted to move. Go ahead, cops. Cops. I don't think y'all getting this. He orders. He orders. So, how does that relate to when there is problems at home? He orders, and he will work it out. We just have to be sure that we align ourselves with him. See, what we do, cop, in the home. Our focus is on the crisis in the home. That's the behavior. But if God put us together, and therefore there's intrusion in that situation, then we're so apt to begin to turn our weapons towards one another, home and ministry, because we are not intentional or conscious of our walk with God. So therefore there would be no prompting of the Spirit To begin to look through your own eyes. We'll see that as I go on and look at your situation through your eyes. Because what you see is just chaos. You see the person is producing this chaos. And we look at John 10.10. What did John 10.10 say? Anybody know what John 10.10 said? The thief thief comes to what? That's right. And Christ said, I come to give you life and life more abundantly. There's only two supernatural powers contending for us. It's not human power. So we can get this in our mind, especially in ministry, that we are not one another enemies. Our wives, our spouses, our workers, we have an enemy who will seek to take advantage of our weak, frail self. Once you understand that, I'm clear on that. Very clear on that. This is what it says here. All things are open to his divine servant. That means he, even before you even say something, he know your thoughts. <laughs> Ooh. And from his great and calm eternity, he orders that which his providence sees best. Therefore, he will take the problem in the home, problem in the ministry, and he will Order it as his providence see best. You see, Brother Teacher, we look at each other. That's right. We look at each other. The what the kind of glass? And what, the, what kind of glass we have? that quotation, yeah. he says, he sits above the destruction of the earth, mm. and all things are open to his divine survey. He takes an aerial view of Come us. Come on now. He sees all around us. 
Not we, just a vertical or horizontal, right. but an aerial view looking down. It's like when they did this little drawn picture of this property here and showed all the places. From our perspective, we only see a little aspect, but God has an aerial view when you look down. So what does that say to us, for I'm us? I'm seeing you. Yeah. I'm not seeing behind me. That's right. But he sees all, all around. So that means, so therefore, I favorite text we quote all the time, trust in the Lord for all your heart and lean not. On your own understanding. Now, this is going to be a cue as we're coming down to a close. In all thy ways, acknowledge him, and he should direct that path. If we acknowledge God, he will direct our path. Decision-making to determine if we're going to align ourselves with God. God will lead your way. He says, how are you making decisions in life? Do you believe it's all up to you? Or do you rely on God to direct your step? That's the question we have to ask ourselves. You may believe, now listen to this, you may believe since God gave you free will, it's for you to choose what to do, where to go. And yes, God has given you the ability to choose, but he wants you to choose what? His way. But Joshua said, for as me and my house, I choose. So look, keep that in mind. God does not take away your free will. He wants you to exercise that free will towards righteousness. Very important. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Very important. So by choosing to follow God, you do not have to depend on your own knowledge because he will lead you. Did you get that? And that that's a fight you got to fight. By doing so, you gain the ability... To his voice, that's John 10, 27, described. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. We cannot distinguish the voice of the God from the voice of man if we do not have this understanding. So by choosing to follow God, you don't have to depend on your own knowledge because he will lead you. By doing so, you gain, listen to this now, you gain that ability to his voice. That means you relinquish your choice. Every moment, relinquish it. When you there at a place getting ready to make a decision, you say, Lord, I relinquish my decision to go this way into your hands. You got to make that commitment. Relinquish it. You still have the choice. Now listen now. You still have the choice to listen to God or go your own way. If you choose to venture out on your own, you may want to ask yourself if, if are you listening to your own voice or following another leading. If you're not sure how to distinguish the various thoughts, listen to me now. If you're not sure how to distinguish the various thoughts that come to your mind when you make a decision, 2 Corinthians 10.5, you look at it or it says, Take captive every thought to make it obedience to Christ. I gave a whole sermon on the word of God. When a, when a thought comes to your mind that is not God, how do you take it captive? From? How do you take it captive? Anybody know what that means? How do you take it captive? When you got two thoughts coming at you. Go this way. Another thought said, no, I want to go this way. How do you take that thought captive? Anybody know how to do that? Come on now. For, I only got a couple minutes. If you don't know how to do that, you're going to be in trouble now. All right. Donna was very trained. She don't know how to do that. Okay. Anybody have a thought before we move on and find out? It says, when that thought, Donna, Donna, two thoughts cannot occupy the same space. I, I say this all the time. So when you're in the process of making a decision, first of all, we got to follow the introduction of the Holy Spirit. His word. And we got to realize the goodness and love of God. So now you're going to have a battle. There's no way you're going to be in a place to make decision without being challenged with your thoughts because you process it. Is it sure? Is this way? You know what I'm saying? All right. Now, so when it says in, in 2 Corinthians 10 5, 
said, take captive every thought. Turn to it. T- turn to it. Second, Second Corinthians 10. Turn to it. So we, we almost turn to it. What is that? Second Corinthians 10. 5 says, cast in down imagination. Right. And every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. Keep that in mind now. Keep going. Bring it into captivity, everything, to the obedience of Christ. All right. Every now, thought. Now read that. Go back now. Start over slowly. Casting down imaginations and every, every high, high thing, thing that exalted thought. itself against the knowledge of right, God. Start right there. Now everything that comes in your mind. If it's exalting itself against the what? Knowledge of God. Of God. Then what it says? And bringing into captivity every thought Thought to to the obedience of Christ. So if a thought is coming to my mind that is not in harmony with God's word, it's cast down by me bringing into captivity to the obedience of what? Of Christ. So that mean that means I must turn to because Christ and the Word are the same. When I turn to Christ, I'm turning to His Word. I got to first and say, Lord, is this thought in Your Word? I got to truly compare that thought with the Word of God. How many of us consciously do that? We don't do that. Casting out imagination. So if you get a thought coming in your mind, Sister Donna, and you're trying to make a decision, you got to check that thought. Against the word of God. But that's the point. That's, that's when it's going to come. That's when it'll come. We'll, we'll give you Bible text on Daniel was in the heat of the moment. Joseph. All of them was in the heat of the moment. That's why we have to habituate ourselves and to be consistent, being able to be conversed with God. It cannot, it will not happen in the moment if you have not accustomed yourself. Do you know what I'm saying? But don't get disappointed if you get knocked down. But now you know. This does not come by intermittent type of situation. It has to be, God said, that cross, pick up your cross daily. When you learn how to surrender your will to God daily, then this text would not be a problem to you. It would become like second nature. Second nature. You know, I know what I'm saying. I mean, because for, for years and years, I read this text. I did not, just like a lot of us, we read texts, do not understand the very practical aspect of it. Bring every thought into obedience to Christ. Okay. I try to just cast it out of my mind. Uh Uh-uh. You got to go to the word of God and cross the Lord. Here's that thought. It is not of you. I release that thought to you. You ever done that before? You ever said, Lord, I release this thought to you? All right, now, then after you release it, what do you think you got to do now? Replace it. Replace it with a thought from God's word. You cannot release it and get up and go away. Did you understand what I just said? He's going to put it because you remember said when you clean it, clean it out and then seven more demons going to come back in, you got to replace it with the thoughts of God. You got to become conversed with this word of God. I don't know if that helps, but that's what it's all about. It says bringing the captivity. And also with action. Most definitely. Well, when you got the word of God, God's word is active. God's word is active. Say, so in a practical, living out daily kind of way, what does this look like? When the devil, listen down, when the devil tried to lead Jesus astray in the wilderness, Luke 4, 1 to 13, describes how he handled bringing thoughts into captivity. He turned to God's truth and responding understanding, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down the strong. Jesus always turned to the word of God. He never for one moment entertained a thought. It is written, the word of God. Of God. For the word of God is quick. 10 4. 10 4. Because our weapons are not carnal. We got to understand we, we're in a spiritual war. Even though we see one another as a human being, but the, we got two powers contending. 
So the word of God got to be hid in our hearts. It goes on. For the word of God is quick, powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing of sunder, soul and spirit, and the joints and the marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. The word of God got to be hid in my heart. Through studying the scriptures, Jesus was prepared to reject wrong thoughts from leading him astray. Like him, you too can prepare yourselves to recognize, listen to this, to recognize and take ungodly thoughts captive by studying God's word. What does 2 Timothy 2.15 say real quick? 2 Timothy 2.15. What does it say? Hmm? Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Study. Rightly divide the word of truth. Well, we cannot neglect truly studying the word of God. If you want to be confident, if you are hearing God's voice and following his leading, the key is to know God's word. Studying scripture equips you to recognize his voice. Why? Because the word of God is his voice and gives you the ability to distinguish between what is true or false. If you have no understanding of God's word. Why? Because his word is a what? Lamp unto my feet and light into my path. Light into my path. Any closing thought this evening that this thought would take us even up to the Sabbath time? All right, somebody quickly tell me one thing that you can gain from our time of sharing. What you can take from this prayer meeting time that would add to your arsenal spiritual weaponry. Hmm? Four ways to know God is leading. Four ways. Mm -hmm. These are the notes here. Go ahead. Four <laughs> ways to know that God is leading. We must consider the spirit, consider the scriptures, Consider the consider wise people and consider the goodness of God. So what what is one of those four ways that really resonate with you? Um, which I know they are, but which one did you really see that is very important to you? The goodness of God. Mm -hmm. Why? Because it says, <laughs> let me go, let me put it on the While she's looking, can someone else think about one area that we discussed that you can connect with? And you can take and add it to your spiritual arsenal. Acquaint yourself with God's word. Acquaint yourself. Amen. Acquaint yourself with God's word. God says that mm. he will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou should go it. He said, and when he does that, he will guide you with his eyes. And these got to become more than words. Acquaint yourself with his words habitually. Habitually. And That's going to be key. In time of, of crisis, mm -hmm. you, it will be easy for you to, to, to be guided by it. By his word. To, by his word. Because easy to recall it. Easy absolutely. To focus on it. That's right. If we have not habitually really been saturated with his word, we have no chance of being guided. 
We will be led by our own thoughts. And we will assume that we know it. But we will not go back to the Word. We got to check everything we do with the Word of God. We can't trust no feelings. Anyone else? And it's not only in periods of crisis we, we do that. Amen. But it's like it should be a lifestyle. Say that again. <laughs> should be a what? It's not only in periods of crisis we see God's word, but a life. way of life. A way of life. May God help us. May God continue to enlighten us. As the year coming to almost a close, we can reflect. We count God's blessings. But if God spares all, we don't want to enter into a new year not having to have a greater understanding. And Hattie, Hattie Lamar said that we must relinquish our choice to God. Amen. Relinquish our choice to God. Brother Teacher, um, I got a call from a, a sister. She wants me to come uh, next May to do to uh, speak at a camp meeting. 24, May 5th next year, the week of May 5th. So I said to her, I said, why are you having the camp meeting so early? She said, have you been watching the news? She said, the world is, is in disarray. Mm. And I don't think I'll be able to have it later on in the year. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, cards. I shouldn't have. Right. She said, this country is not going to be the same. So if we don't have a camp meeting, we still be about to follow the business. So that's, that t dictate to us the moves we make, right? Yeah, we, we, we need to stay ready at all times in the first place. Brother Carl said, God give us an experimental knowledge of him through the, absolutely, Carl. So we pray for for us as a people, man, what motivates us to truth? We see, I mean, we, I mean, I don't know, we sense the urgency of time. Should I just stop, throw down my weaponry, and see, the more you all listen to the news, the more you're going to become entrenched with fear and, and anxious. So, and we don't want to be, you know, not aware. But we got a work to do, and God knows. Through his providence, he sees. He got his eyes on Ukraine. He got his eyes on Russia. He got his eyes on this little dot right here. All right? We are to bring into captivity every thought to obedience to truth. I learned a new understanding of that verse. Praise God, Brunella. All right. Anybody else have a closing thought? Don't, to God. don't look at the crisis. Don't look, look at, at the crisis, but look at the word. The word, look Christ. Word. That's right. So let us take this into our new day experience. Let's move forward. All right. Let's have a word of prayer. Thank God for our time. Right, Sister Jackson? Mm. Amen. <laughs> oh, love from above. Father God in heaven, we thank you for allowing us the privilege to be together, study your word together, petition your throne on behalf of others, seeking a closer walk with you, seeking, Lord, that experience that will raise us up into heavenly places. And Lord, increase our understanding of your goodness, your infinite love, Knowing your infinite love, we have nothing to fear but fear itself, because fear torment. Perfect love casts out fear. Increase our capacity to hold your love. And let your love flow through our soul, to our spouses, to our families, to our fellow workers, to all those that come under our influence. And let these thoughts be upon our hearts. Increase our faith. Help our unbelief, wherever they may be. Lord, let us see through your eyes 
how you are divinely orchestrating your work in this earth. The Lord, you called into existence. You made it. and Therefore, you will restore it back to its original glory. And all we need to do is use that free will that you've given us to align our ideas, our thoughts, with your thoughts. And that your thoughts will prevail and our thoughts will be cast out. Cast them out and give us your thoughts. Give us peace. Let, us, let our night be sweet and refreshing. Strengthen us and order our steps by your spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.